Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods, Pastor Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the Daily Devotion for September 14th, 2020. Today's title, Moving Day. Well, this last weekend, we rearranged the house. My youngest son, who is getting married in, in a month or so, <clears throat> has moved to the downstairs in the basement and is fixed where we, we fixed up a little apartment down there. Meanwhile, my oldest and his bride have moved upstairs to his old room in anticipation of eventually building their own house and moving on in the spring. What does all this mean? Well, good Lutheran question to ask, for sure. It means that we had to do a lot of moving uh, this uh, last Saturday. Saturday was moving day, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> if you've ever experienced moving from one house or apartment to another, uh, and it's most likely that you probably have, then you understand moving day. Trisha and I have had many moving days in our 25 years. It always begins with culling of the old things, broken toys, forgotten clothes, the land of um, old furniture, used things, you know, um, all those things need to go away. I mean, who filled our closets with so much junk anyway? Uh, must have been the garden gnomes, I guess. I don't know. But moving from our house in Charlestown to an apartment, we quickly dis discovered in only five years of living in one house how much stuff you can accumulate just like that. <laughs> I mean, it takes nothing at all to, to accumulate stuff that you eventually say, I don't need. Then we began to move things to our storage locker back then. And by the way, if you need a storage locker, here's the real truth. If you need a storage locker, you got too much stuff. And so <clears throat> I remember we got back into that uh, that storage locker about a year later, and we kept all but a hand. Uh, we got rid of rather all but a handful of things. We only kept, I think, like five different things and only one big piece of furniture that we'd stored. I'm thinking, why do we pay money for all this all year long to keep it? Whatever. <clears throat> Our family has moved many times, and each time I remember we didn't like it. I don't like it. It's always stressful. <laughs> Something important always seems to get lost. Paperwork, screws or bolts uh, for your tables or your bed frames all seem to disappear somehow. And worst of all, it doesn't take long to realize that <clears throat> just how much dirt you have left in the house. And we've become pretty used to our own dirt, let's face it. Last weekend was proof, even though we thought we had everything cleaned up, oh, we didn't. Well, we have plenty of dust and dog hair and uh, and dirt that the vacuums missed. One might even be able to go back and knit a whole brand new dog over all the hair we seem to have found. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's a little embarrassing, right? I mean, we thought we had it all. If we had a sign with a phone number on, on our front door, the sign would read something like, How's my cleaning? I might have gotten a few calls this last weekend, let's just say. The thing about moving day is that it's always the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. Moving day is a transition day. Old things have to let go of, uh, make room for the new. Have to let go of those old things. Things that were once important are replaced with something different. And a home is replaced by another home, another location. Now, this weekend's move was a transition for both of our boys. They remain in the house, in the same house for now, but not in the same circumstances. You see, things are beginning to change. Soon both will be married. The oldest and his bride are poised to build a house and move into it very soon, hopefully in the spring. The other is getting married and stabilizing things as much as he can until his bride-to-be finishes their pharmacy school. And then the two of them can go make a home together. Before long, probably way too soon. It'll be real quiet around here. So I'm learning to savor the days that we have, as chaotic as they can be sometimes. Well, Exodus 12 also talks about moving day for the Israelites. Uh, <clears throat> it's a transition day, a time where they go from being slaves to being free people, to being, to being uh, citizens of Egypt, to being a nation of Yahweh. So let's listen to verses 31 to 42. It says, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron that, at night. This is Passover night. Get up and go away from my people, both you and the people of Israel. Go and worship the Lord as you've said. 
Take your flocks and your cattle, as you've said, and go and pray that good will come to me also. The Egyptians were trying to make the people hurry out of the land, for they said, We will all be dead. So the people took their dough before yeast had been added. They tied their dough pots in their clothes on the shoulders. The people of Israel had done what Moses had said. They had asked the Egyptians for things made of silver and gold and for clothes. And the Lord had given the people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. So the Egyptians let them have whatever they asked for. And they took the best things of Egypt. Of course, that's take what you want and go. Get out. It goes on to say, in verse 37, the people of Israel traveled from Ramses to Succoth. They were about 600,000 men uh, on foot and also women and children. And a mixed group of people went with them and very many flocks and cattle. They made the dough, though they brought out of Egypt, the dough they brought out of Egypt into loaves of bread without yeast. Yeast was not added to the dough because they had they'd been sent out of Egypt and could not wait. They could not make a uh, ready any food for themselves. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt 430 years. At the end of 430 years on that same day, all of the Lord's people left Egypt. It was a night to be remembered for the Lord for having brought them out of the land of Egypt. This night is for the Lord to be remembered by all the people of Israel for all time. Passover was moving night. By the time the sun came up, there were no more Israelites in Egypt. <clears throat> the Israelites were on their way out uh, carrying gold and silver and clothes and as much stuff as they could carry with them. Yeah, I think that was sort of their mistake, actually. They didn't need all that stuff. But remember, much of that gold and that silver was eventually used to make the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant later on in the articles for the, for the, uh, for the worship there. And so here again, one chapter was ending in the history of God's people, and another chapter was beginning. Sadly, this generation would be exiled for 40 years in the wilderness, in the desert, because they didn't trust God when they finally got to the border of the promised land. However, this moving day would literally shape Israel's history and its future for the rest of its existence. Even now, they remember this. Uh, Jewish folks celebrate the Passover as a memorial to this day, remembering that night when they were set free from Egypt under Moses. Now going to college, moving into dorms and out of dorms for four years in Ann Arbor, going to seminary and moving in and out of there a few times, going on to Vicarage, moving in, moving out, getting married and moving into an apartment with my bride, moving to our first call and into a rental house, then to our second call and into a parsonage, and then here to Grace, and to a house in Charlestown, and then to an apartment, and then now to our current house. We've done a lot of moving, but not nearly as much as others, I'm sure, uh, have. All of our moving days have been mem um, memorable, but not defining. Not like the way the Israelites had a defining day when they left Egypt. They left the bondage of Egypt to become the nation of Israel in the promised land. Now in 2 Corinthians 5.1, it speaks of another move, and I don't want to leave this out. Because the, the, uh, the exodus, leaving of, of Israel, or a leaving of Egypt, Israel becomes defined by that. They become the people of Israel. And so we hear in 2 Corinthians 5, 1, it speaks of another move. It says, this early, earthly tent we live in will be replaced by a house that not built by human hands. There'll be one more transition. There'll be one more day or night in which we move eventually. It'll be the most definitive move any one of us will eventually have. Any one of us, it'll change uh, not just our address, but who we are from a fallen a uh, sinful person to a risen one, safe with the Lord. The new home will be permanent, and there we will be free. We'll no longer be bondage in bondage to sin. It will define us because, um, because of who lives there, namely Jesus, our Savior. And the old things will disappear for sure, and the new things will take hold. Best of all, we won't need anything from this world. We won't need to take any gold or silver or clothes like the Egyptian did. We can't. We won't need them. 
all of those things will fade away. What's more, <clears throat> those of us that believe in the kingdom of, of the Lord, that believe in Jesus, will have a share in that kingdom. And um, everyone we love who believes that same promise will have a share in that kingdom as well. There will be no greater treasure than that. This will be a moving day unlike any other. And it's one we hope for and look forward to. One chapter will end and another one will begin. That'll be a great day. I pray that it blesses you with anticipation and hope. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and forever and always give you his peace in Jesus. I'm Pastor Woods. Thanks for being with us this morning.